I grew up in Afton, Wyoming, uh, the youngest son of Reed and Virginia Gardner, with eight brothers and sisters, me being the youngest. Afton, Wyoming uh, is a small town, uh, 1,500 people, uh, you know, really cold in the winter, uh, short summers. So for me as a young child, you know, I learned how to work hard and uh, learn how to go out and uh, do never-ending chores. But the opportunity to go to a small school was something I really appreciated and had a chance to have, uh, you know, all my brothers and sisters there to, to support me in the sports endeavors and then all the way to the Olympics and have uh, a small, to, you know, small community of, uh, you know, aft and be able to be behind, be behind me and uh, have my back was pretty amazing because twice in our lives uh, the whole community came together to help put our crops up once when my brother passed away and then when we were in Sydney winning the Olympic Games. I got involved in uh, wrestling uh, in Afton, uh, and it was part of the Pee Wee wrestling program in Star Valley, where I'm from. And it was only four days a year, the fifth day being Friday. We actually went in and wrestled, and it wasn't about uh, takedowns. It was probably the last one to, to uh, fall on top of the other one won the match. So me and my brother that was a year older than me, we used to battle every day. And all the way through high school until uh, the end of my junior year, my brother used to be able to beat me until I finally started to figure out how to defeat my brother. And then ultimately my senior year, I got the chance to go in and uh, win the state title and uh, go, to, uh, you know, go to college and have the opportunity to take it to the next level. I had the chance to go to uh, two great, uh, you know, universities and colleges. I went to uh, Rick's Junior College in Rexburg, Idaho. Uh, freshman year I fell a little bit short. I was, uh, you know, uh, third place my freshman year in JUCOs. Second year I was ranked number one going all the way through the season. Ended up winning the Junior, junior College National Championship. Then transferred to the University of Nebraska and ended up uh, taking fourth place at the University of Nebraska and uh, felt that my wrestling career wasn't finished but uh, my education was probably the most important thing to me. I went and spent two more years, a total of six and a half years, to get my four-year uh, four diploma and I uh, got my degree from the university and uh, graduated and uh, was very happy and uh, felt like uh, you know, my career academically was fulfilled, but my wrestling career, I still had more to be desired and that was where you know, it took me to the Olympic Games. Finally making the Olympic team in uh, 2000, having the chance to beat uh, you know, three-time uh, Olympic and world silver medalist Matt Gaffari was a dream come true, but then, you know, having the chance to go out there and represent America, you know, not very many people thought we'd had a chance to win a medal at any weight class, and then to see us win three medals and have the chance to go to, you know, beautiful Australia was spectacular, and then to get there it was, you know, it was almost predetermined and pre, you know, destined that, uh, you know, things would, would work out, and, you know, I never imagined, you know, anything that I'd ever have a chance to go out and you know win the Olympic gold medal to beat Alexander Karelin and to even be in that match. Alexander Karelin hadn't lost in 13 years. In Sydney, the contrast between he and Gardner was absurdly polar. Chiseled, rounded, menacing, friendly, unbeatable, unaccomplished. Gardner became an American folk hero partly because of his down-home way, but mostly because he did the undoable. Do you believe in miracles again? Roland Gardner has upset the king! Ladies and gentlemen, please acknowledge our Olympic medalist. For me, I think I have to you know, more credit than anybody probably to, you know, my coaches and Steve Frazier, Dan Chandler, you know, convincing me that I had the chance and then ultimately God for giving me the chance to, to make the team and then to go out there and represent America and to win the gold medal and to bring that back. It, it was something truly special. And then to come back, uh, you know, and continue wrestling was, was, you know, something that I already determined before the Olympics because there was no guarantee I'd even win a medal or even, you know, show up and perform good. So for me, it was already determined before the match had started that I was going to continue for uh, four more years because I made a commitment to myself, win, lose, or draw at the Olympics. You know, you're going to go and, and make an eight-year run out of it and see what great things you can do in, uh, you know, a total of eight years. And to come back, it was something special to, to win the world championships and, uh, you know, to come back to back, you know, back to back and, and win the two uh, biggest tournaments of the year it was something special. And then ultimately to retire and win the bronze medal. It was a culmination of uh, lots of years of hard work and lots of years of sweat. 
30 seconds left in the clinch here. All important position now. Somebody's going to score a point here in 25 seconds or less. He releases Gardner it. Gardner gets it down. That does it. Well, he's come a long way. Get back here to the Olympics. Gets that bronze medal here with a victory 3-0 in the overtime in the heavyweight division. Russ, there's no doubt now he is the greatest U.S. Greco-Roman wrestler ever. And he's faced his challenges. He's a survivor. He's an inspiration for his success. In Greco-Roman, I had a lot of great coaches, uh, starting with uh, you know the man that brought me into Greco-Roman wrestling, uh, Mike Houck, through uh, Steve Frazier, national team coach, uh, Dan Chandler, Rob Herman, uh, Anatoly, you know, Petrosian. There's just so many great coaches that I had the opportunity to, to work with on a daily basis that uh, really brought me into the sport. And it, it was something about uh, being patient is probably what uh, Roman Roklowski really talked about the first two years. And, you know, being so close to being an Olympian in uh, 1996, I felt that uh, part of me wasn't fulfilled and I wanted to go out there and work extra hard. But, uh, you know, a lot of the coaches said, be patient, it'll come, it just takes time. I remember being at uh, Nebraska, being down in uh, Stillwater and having the opportunity to go in and see, you know, all the wrestling memorabilia and seeing all that and seeing my, my picture, or my, my little name on the wall for the Junior College National Championship, it was so special and, you know, seeing that I had actually made it on the wall was something that was pretty amazing. And now to, to be, uh, you know, put on the wall as, you know, a great American wrestler amongst all the amazing uh, athletes that uh, had competed before us in such a, uh, you know, worthy sport of wrestling. It, it truly humbles me, but also, you know, gives me the opportunity to, to respect it.